Hi team, welcome to the screencast where we focus on recapping some of the concepts from Level 2 PE. The concepts we are discussing in this presentation will include skill classification, stages of learning, practice methods and feedback. And these are all related to motor skill learning. First of all, what is a motor skill? As you can see here, a motor skill can be defined as a learned, coordinated activity which achieves a goal. The key elements here are that it is coordinated and must be learned. Furthermore, a skill can be classified into the following four main types of skills. Fine or gross, open or closed, discrete, continuous or serial, self-paced or externally paced. Fine or gross skills are classified according to the amount of movement required to complete the skill. A fine motor skill typically involves performing small and precise movements using small muscles in the body, such as tiddlywinks, while a gross motor skill typically involves performing large movements using the major muscle groups in the body, such as swimming. Open or closed skills are classified according to the environment the skills are performed in. A closed skill is performed in an environment which is minimal change. The performer is in complete control of the skill with very few external factors interfering with the performance. An example here of a closed skill shows Dan Carter practicing a place kick in an empty stadium. An open skill is performed in a constantly changing environment where many factors can affect performance. The example here shows Stephen Donald lining up the winning kick in the final of the 2011 Rugby World Cup. What are the differences between these two kicks which make them open or closed? Pause the video and take some notes now. Discrete continuous or serial skills are classified according to whether the skill has a defined beginning and end point. A discrete skill has a defined start and end point. A serial skill is made up of a number of discrete skills in sequence. A continuous skill has no defined start or end point. Go ahead and classify the skills identified in the images. Nick Willis the runner, a triple jumper and Tiger Woods the golfer. Self-paced and externally paced skills are classified according to how the movement is initiated. The footballer decides at what point the ball will be thrown in whereas the starter will decide at what point the 100 meter race will start. The bottom picture is great as it shows an empty lane 5 where Usain Bolt turned an external pace skill into a self pace skill by jumping the gun and getting himself disqualified from the 2011 World Championships. Stages of learning are only going to be discussed briefly here but they play an important role in our upcoming unit. It's really important that you have a strong grasp of each stage of learning what the characteristics are of each stage and effective ways to inform each stage of learning. Cognitive. In this stage, the learner develops an understanding of how to perform the skill. The learner is attempting to put a picture of the skill together with all its subroutines in the correct order in their mind. Associative. This stage is characterised by a learner practising the skill in order to eliminate mistakes. This stage takes place over a long period of time and requires large amounts of practice. Autonomous. This stage is characterised by a learner automatically applying the skill in competitive situations. Skill performance by this learner no longer requires conscious thought. Massed practice involves performing a skill over and over again until it is achieved while distributed practice is performing the skill with rest sessions in between until the skill is learned. Take a look at this example of massed practice. This basketballer's name is Ray Allen and he's the greatest uh, three-point shooter of all time in the NBA. During the season and off-season he'll shoot a bare minimum of 500 shots a day. There are a few risks associated with mass practice and it's also suited to a specific type of learner. We will discuss this in some of the following slides. Risks with mass practice include fatigue, poor technique, boredom, injury and frustration. 
Some of the benefits of MAST practice include they are suitable for highly motivated athletes, low energy tasks and simple skills. Distributed practice is preferred at an early stage of learning when there is a task with high energy demands, a complex skill or a boring task. Before we move on, pause the video and describe what changes you would make to Ray Allen's workout so that, so that it would move from a massed practice to a distributed practice. Whole learning is when the skill is taught in its entirety. Part learning is when the skill is broken down into its associated parts or subroutines. These parts are then learned. An example of whole learning could be teaching all subroutines of the freestyle stroke at the same time. Of course, expecting someone to learn freestyle this way would be silly and ineffective as a teaching method in this situation. An example of part learning in the same context would be to break down the different subroutines and teach them individually. Kicking, breathing, body position, arm technique. These can all be taught separately and contribute to the development of the whole school. Pause the video now and list the advantages of whole learning and the advantages of part learning. We will finish this screencast by quickly discussing four types of feedback. Internal feedback comes from internal receptors within the body. For example, your muscles might tell you that a cartwheel you just performed was performed straight. External is feedback that comes from verbal, audible or visual sources. This incorporates all the sights and sounds of a performance or game. As an example, a loud home crowd may tell you that your team is performing well, while a quiet home crowd may tell you that your team is performing poorly. Knowledge of results, or KR, is information received about the outcome of your performance. For example, being told that the ball was in, or that you finished the sprint in 8 seconds. The key aspect here is that the KR comes from an external source such as a coach, the crowd, or video. Knowledge of performance, or KP, is feedback you get about the actual performance of the skill. For example, your leg wasn't extended enough. KP can come from either an internal or external source. That's it for this session. Make sure you take some good notes, summarise well and come to the next class with a good question prepared.